We're at the site of Tel Esafi, which is Gat of the Philistines. It's a very important archaeological site, but for more than a century, it wasn't excavated. But in 1996, when we came to the site, we saw the enormous potential, and we soon discovered that the site is much larger and much richer than anyone had ever assumed. And since 1996, for the last 15 years, we've been working intensely on the site with astounding results. We are staying here for one month, and that month we're basically collecting data. Collecting data, learning about the architecture, about the find, the material culture, the seeds, the environment, the bones. And after this month, we're taking all the data and bringing it to our lab. At the lab, we're working on this material for at least 11 months until the next season, raising questions, getting answers from this material, and hopefully in the end, we're creating a whole picture of the ancient lives over here, the biblical guide of the 9th century BC. I came here because I want to learn something about archaeological dig. It's my third time, and this time my family is coming with me. I was in Israel, I was studying with the Aaron Meir for my PhD, so I was his student, so that's how I heard about Teresa Fi. It's an archaeological site, but it's a biblical archaeological site, so it's directly related to what I've studied. I would like to deal with uh, the archaeology of Israel and the Near East, so that's why I came here. This is part of my Bible my history, and it's important to me to find out what happened here. I love working with my hands and learning in the field. Um, I don't like reading, like learning from books. I learn a lot better when I can like see it, feel it, touch it. Everything we find in this area is just as it was that day that it was destroyed, and so we're finding all sorts of really great finds, and it's uh, it's exciting. Well, I enjoy it. It's a hobby. It's something I always enjoyed. And I love Israel. People don't have the chance in other places in the world to dig at such a site. So I think that it's a great opportunity for lots of different types of people. We have a very, very international team. People from all over the world, both scientists, students, and volunteers. Now, this multinational team come from all kinds of different fields of science. We have historians, archaeologists, philologists, anthropologists from the social and humanities, but we have biologists, chemists, physicists, um, geomorphologists, each one with his own perspective and expertise, all coming together and to synthesize a, a better understanding of the past. We teach them about the different material culture that they're going to find and the thing that they're, the way that they're going to expose them. After we teach them, we're working with them. Each of my assistants have a certain amount of squares with certain amount of people that is working with them closely. And in the end, they're basically tunneling all the information to me, and I'm going between them and decide with them what we can do and the way that we should proceed and uh, uncovering the beautiful site. One of the things we're now trying to do at Barilan University is utilizing the archaeological remains and the archaeological excavations for educational purposes. When a young school student will learn about, for example, the book of Samuel, and he will read about the story of Samson and Delilah, if we can have him pick up a sherd, which is a Philistine sherd from the time of Samson, and through this he will remember the story in a much more tangible way than just reading the text, this is something that we can uh, utilize in, a, in an interactive and productive manner, which I think if we stick to old methods of education, we will lose. Just the other day, we were pulling out a huge storage jar, like up to here. Just amazing, it's so big. It was totally upside down like this and must have weighed you know, 30, 40 kilos. I found a complete strainer, which um, it was complete and we had all the pieces, so we were able to put it back together. We uh, had the opportunity to get out the big whole vessels, cooking pots and stuff, and it was really, really quite amazing. We found the figurine, okay? It looks like a horse or cow. We found the loom weights over there, and we've now found the floor. 
due to the size of the site, the many periods and cultures represented here, and the rich remains, I have a feeling I'm going to be here for many more years. And we have many questions that are, have yet to be answered. And every year, more questions arise. And although we do now have a better picture of the history of this site than we had 15 years ago, there's still much to do here.